I'd love to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. We're going to roll out the uh, bull thesis on Hylion, and this is um, going to be in line with my conviction of the stock. Before we get started, I do, do want to um, disclose to each and every one of you guys, please do your own due diligence, okay? Um, you're going to get my um, honest opinion, uh, but that's what these are. They are opinion. They are driven at uh, the potential for offering some awareness and some education on the topic, okay? That's what makes a conversation. And that quite frankly is what is divining the uh, investing landscape now amongst retail investors is the availability of, of information. Uh, credible, mine just so happens to be through YouTube. It is uh, an opinion uh, based, uh, but, but also try, uh, I tried to generate these uh, based on factual observations, based on my due diligence. So I just wanna stress to everybody, man, to make sure that they are doing their own homework, validating for themselves before they um, look, look to take a, a potential position in that. Uh, keep in mind the intent of these videos is aimed on awareness, um, uh, that of which I believe in an environment where um, highly on holdings is a publicly traded company. I don't believe there's a lot of awareness right now on this opportunity. Um, and that's what fires me up, at least on a, on a once a, a week clip. Um, and um, I do garner credibility in that I own the stock. I will say this again, I do garner credibility because I own the stock. Um, I don't do this to boost up my YouTube channel. As a matter of fact, if you don't like the fact that I do highly on videos, I'll give you a few moments to unsubscribe right now. Fantastic. That was the world's smallest violin uh, providing a, a solilo soliloquy for you um, on your exit because you have a problem with me coming on and sharing my opinion. Again, credibility. Uh, and it's not as if I have 25 shares of the company. I currently own 12,100 shares of the company. Um, so my, my opinion is justified and it's warranted. Um, I look to look at this perspective and opportunity from a couple of different angles. Um, and I do take pop shots at those people who are doing highly on videos only for their own personal gain um, because the topic is uh, of interest to a lot of people out there. Um, but I think your opinion fails in comparison to those uh, that garner some level of merit, in other words, owning the stock as a prerequisite to come on and talk about the company. People will disagree with me all, all they want. That's fine. You can get the hell out of my face with that garbage. I'm not going to sit and listen to somebody who doesn't actually own this, the company talk about the company for the benefit of their own channel. Nobody's opinion is that important. That's the thing. You can get all kinds of good information free of charge. Just join the uh, Discord group. They're, they're all fired up over there. You can get all kinds of different varying opinions on the company and a hell of a lot more of an education on it. Um, I don't need to tune into one singular opinion um, to watch them grow their personal agenda because they can only get 50 views uh, on other videos of other topics. So um, that's my stint on that. The stock price, it's laughable. <laughs> it's laughable, okay? Less than $4 a share right now. The irony in the whole thing is we've just been provided clarity on uh, earnings in 2022, which I consider to be a bridge year to 2023. Here's what I mean by that. Two to $3 million uh, on the top end revenue side of the house represents on the low end of 2 million, an increase of 900% year over year, 900%, okay? Stock market as of now, people are saying, well, hell, this stock will never go up and it acts like it, okay? Volumes are pretty light, okay? In between two and two and a half million per day, volume rather light. Buying interest is rather light. And I think that it's going to take a, a few catalysts, um, a few tangible catalysts, ones that you can taste to actually generate the amount of churn necessary uh, to get this stock out of the rut that it's in. It's right smack in a rut, no doubt about it. But on the high side, if it does 3 million in revenue, okay, based on the hybrid EX sales, which is something that I couldn't believe it when Sherry Baker talked about it on the Q4 call uh, last fall, uh, excuse me, from uh, Q4 of last year. To generate 3 million in revenue with the hybrid EX product in a face of an industry that is looking to bridge the gap between, um, 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 you know, a full diesel dominated fleet and, and moving into more of an electrified or a hydrogen fuel cell future, uh, I think speaks to um, the level of interest uh, on the bottom line, you could say one way or the other, I've been um, extremely disappointed in the rhetoric around the hybrid EX thus far uh, from Mr. Healy, um, it would seemingly suggest that there's more interest than we give credit 
four if they're basing their sales projections into 2022 um, at, at two to three million bucks. And I, I thought that was pretty lofty. Um, can they can they surpass that? If they surpass that, I will do mother effing backflips. I will. Um, I'll probably fall on my head and kill myself. Uh, but it, nonetheless, I will be absolutely ecstatic because that's what that means. A $3 million on the top end is a 1,400% increase year over year, 1,400%. And, and again, I've just gotten used to owning this stock and seeing it never go up. So um, I, I don't know how I would feel if it goes up. As a matter of fact, we'll tar- talk about that a little bit from a bullish conviction on the company and what that means solidified being forged in fire for this investing community that uh, um, seemingly has been forged um, in an environment that um, I wouldn't have wished on anybody. This has been horrendous uh, stock action. It's been horrible, horrible. Um, but right now from a bullish conviction, unlike my bearish thesis on looking at the past performance uh, of the company and, and generating a, a bearish thesis on the company based on the, the, the past uh, performance of the company, right? We don't invest in the past. We invest for the future. And the question becomes, um, is this a, a, an entry point? I, I don't know. Um, that's for you to heed my disclaimer at the top of this video and, and, and make your investments as you see fit. Um, make your conviction uh, make sense for you. But right now, at, at less than $4, um, I'm accumulating shares personally. I just bought 1,000 shares this week, uh, pressed my share base up to about 12.1. Um, I'm satisfied with my Roth IRA positions. And um, the build out now potentially um, it is to move a little bit more into the um, into the taxable brokerage account. That way I can have a little more access to that capital. Um, I do own a lot of leaps in the company. Uh, so I'm allowing those to kind of to, to, to churn right now. Those are obviously not doing anything because those leaps are at strikes at you know, $5 a share, uh, $10 a share and $12.50 a share, which again, across the bullish uh, uh, um, um, spectrum of price targets right now I, I, is irrelevant where it is for me now. If I can accumulate this company sub 10, let alone sub five, which is laughable, <laughs> I, laughable, honestly, um, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a potentially wonderful entry based on everything that we heard and really the shift in sentiment that I felt like was garnered on the Q4 call. Um, I honestly felt that way. I did. I, I don't think I'm over being, being overblown. Um, there's things that I'm going to talk about here that were brought to light on the Q4 that uh, I've been doing this a long, long time. And where I was critical before, and I'm still critical on this company, and I will continue to be critical into the horizon. No problem, because I'm always looking at you know the next thing. I want to see this company go global. Okay, but they've got to get through the domestic markets and certifications and, and the mass scale up and the mod centers, et cetera, et cetera, as we as we look to build out the opportunity. Okay, but right now, pick your poison. All right, you want to invest in, in value right now? Absolutely. Where's it going to be in five years? I think the scary question is where is this company going to be in five years? Out of business? Is it going to be four dollars a share? I don't, I don't know. Is it going to be? something higher than that in the future. And, and this is what we deliberate about. And that's the beauty of the conversation when trying to generate churn around the conversation, offer awareness on those opportunities out there that I think right now, from a broad perspective with everything going on in the stock market, everything is getting drawn down no matter what, okay? Diesel above $4 is bullish for Hylion. It doesn't matter at this point, okay? Everything is getting drugged down with the current environment and the markets and things are bad. Things are bad, okay? I'm going to continue to monitor markets. We're going to continue to weather the storm and we're going to live to fight another day. But I am actually accumulating where I think there was some, some buying after the Q4, right? Some people started picking up shares at the 450 level, 425 level. Um, I did not. Um, I, I thought that this company has done nothing other than prove that it, in the eyes of the stock market, cannot get out of a rut and that those opportunities would be provided at a little bit less of a stock uh, price. I could have been wrong. I actually thought I was. I thought we were going to see this thing jump right above five and through into six dollars, which at some point during the year, I believe that's going to happen. I believe through natural uh, attrition, this thing is going to rise. And I think we're going to end the, the year at about 12 bucks, okay? Half of my PT, which is $24, which I think this company will eventually be there anyway. Um, I don't do year price targets. I just say what I think that the company is going to be at and I'll revise as appropriate. But 
12 coming out of this year, going into 2023, going to mass scale. Yeah, I'll revise to the upside. <laughs> you guys will understand the method to my madness, trust me. And, and if nothing else, the credibility that I've garnered over YouTube in not only being a shareholder, this is real money. This is not monopoly. Um, and it's not something that I try to like sk sleight of hand or somehow I'm eligible to talk the com about the company as not a shareholder. I wouldn't waste my effing time. It's just a waste of my time to come on and just gar garner interest on a company that I don't even have conviction on, or I do, but I don't have enough conviction to buy the company. Hell no, man. No, that, that, that's not how that works. But we talked about the stock price here, man. Year over year projections, according to Sherry Baker, raising with the hybrid EX sales, if they can do two to three million, I'm super, super stoked on that. Um, the observation at this point is can they? Um, that's the key. And those are the metrics that uh, I feel like if you are interested in the company, to just join the Discord group, man. Those guys do a great job. Guys and gals, fabulous conversation generated. There's a few schools of thought, a few people um, that uh, unfortunately cover highly on and they seem to be like they've left the group because they think that it's one sided or, or another. I, I could give two shits less. I, I'm strong enough. I, I, I have my opinion. Look, you want to argue with me? No problem. It's business. You want to agree with me? Great. It's business. It, it just doesn't matter to me. I'm still convicted in my, in my thing. And it, whether or not I'm part of the highly on Discord group or not, it, it does not, I, I don't get butt hurt about that kind of stuff. Okay. There's going to be people in there that are going to, you know, generate churn based on their opinion. They're going to argue with you. It's okay. All right. Toughen up a little bit. Stop being a bitch. You want to understand information about it. I find it to be an extremely useful group to throw whatever comments in the group you want. You're going to get some fabulous, fabulous turn back. And I do owe Rick and the real Christopher a real thank you, to be honest with you. I, I get nothing but real candid responses back from those folks, uh, as well as the largest shareholder in the group. Um, it's a difficult last name, and I do apologize. I, people are going to know who I'm talking about in the Discord group, but uh, he's also very, very sharp, very sharp investor, large shareholder in the company. Those are the people I respect, those folks that have, you know, 50, 60,000 shares, maybe even a million shares of the company. Yeah, when those folks step up and they say something, that means a lot. Not some bitch YouTuber, man, that comes on and looks to garner a thousand views every three days on a highly on video just because it's the politically correct thing to do. Grow a set, all right? Do something productive with your time, all right? Fleet feedback from a bullish uh, perspective has been fabulous, all right? Fleet feedback across the board. They've gone down the line with the innovation councils. Everybody loves the product, baby. We're on a countdown here, guys, until mass scale up, going from low volume production to mass scale up. It's awesome. Fleet feedback has been fabulous. And it was earmarked for me this week when my boy, J Mac Investing, went down, sat in the passenger seat of the hyper truck ERX with Thomas Healy in the back. And you could see him go whoop, suck to the seat as when they accelerated. Dude, the, you watch the smiles on their face, man. Th this, is this is wonderful. And for me, it speaks to the increased potential of payload. It, 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 it speaks to the increase of uh, driver comfort, which is just, I mean, there's all kinds of ingredients we're putting in this bullish pot, all kinds of ingredients, man. Um, and Thomas Healy mentioned on the last Q4 call that this is something that he overlooked with regard to attracting new talent to the industry. What, what, a, what, a, what a wonderful way to bring in a young driver and tell that young driver who may have their own agenda with regard to you know, helping the planet. And maybe they don't want to drive a diesel truck that's polluting the shit out of the atmosphere. And maybe the sell to that young driver who's more than capable capable of driving that truck safely up and down to deliver goods and be compensated to do so, can do so with the compliments of burning CNG or RNG that's going to be good for the environment. Think about the power, baby. Huh? Well, how do you think I get so fired up on this topic to come on and deliver the bullish thesis on highly on holdings? It's just that simple. Now, people would come on and be like, well, you're trying to boost the stock, Ryan. You do not know me worth an atom, baby. All right. If you want to come on and debate me, I come on live every Friday. The irony in the whole thing is nobody ever does. OK, I thought Anonymous was on Friday because I, I call Anonymous out in the Yahoo thread all the time. That bitch needs to come out from behind the stone, really, and debate me when this thing is in a more convic convenient position as far as I'm concerned. If it goes to zero, I'll eat crow. No problem. I'll be wrong. OK. When this thing is at 100, 
that mother effer needs to come on and debate me during my 24 hour live stream. I will provide 24 hours of unabated opportunity for anonymous to come on and debate me one on one. It will be fun until they can ha have had enough because I will chew them up. I don't know who it is. I don't know if it's part of the um, anonymous cyber hacking group. I don't know because I never get a response from them. But that's the thing is nobody nobody's real anymore, right? Everybody just flips, you know, oh my goodness, it's a great report. So all of a sudden now I'm bullish on the company, right? Uh, I would suggest that perhaps there was not a lot of people beyond me um, before the last earnings call, which expectations were as low as they possibly could be with the courage enough to come onto YouTube and provide content like I did. Mm -hmm. Yep. You can like it or not. Okay. Deal with it. Okay. Um, it speaks to my conviction on this company um, and I will be forever forever grateful for you guys for acknowledging that of me and sticking with me through the thick and the thin okay which according to the stock price it's been nothing but anemic over the last few years what can i say um, i don't invest for the past i invest for the future and it's just that simple when we start to put some of these fleet interests together when you hear budweiser talk about you know um trying all the different solutions out there that's why they're trying nikola that's why they're probably trying tesla pepsi going with tesla it's all good for the industry as a whole. And the idea here is that how many of those fleets are going to feel comfortable relying on the solution enough to completely, um, completely take away from a diesel unit? That's going to be the key. And I look at a, at a cross comparison. The Hypertruck ERX beats the diesel in every single category TCO. All we've got to do is bridge the gap between those two realities and we are off and running guys and the fleet feedback that we're getting from these uh, fleets like Budweiser uh, from Ryder who uh, mentioned the driver sentiment piece um, one that I really appreciated coming from uh, uh, Ryder um, doesn't carry as much of uh, 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 validation coming from me right I'm not a truck driver I don't know but it just kind of makes sense some of these younger uh, people coming up they may even have more appreciation for the environment than even than even I have been, you know, predestined to have, or 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 my biases uh, may affect my ability to care uh, for the planet as much as I should, right? But this younger generation, man, they freaking care, and they care enough to say, you know what, that would be nice to make one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, but I can't, based on my own conviction and my own beliefs, drive that truck for the support of profit for a fleet that doesn't care enough about the environment. To, enough to put me in a, a truck that is providing that technology to, to help uh, the planet. It's it's more of, of an improvement for the planet to actually run the Hypertruck ERX with the amount of metric tons that are removed from potentially off-gassing that methane to the environment, man. It's, it's, it's incredible times, man. And to be convicted on this company is easy. The validation will come. We do not have the validation now. That validation will come. We're getting tricklings of it now. But in stock market investing, being as dynamic as it is, as bad as it seems right now, wait till things get good. You'll be like, oh my God, this is too much good information, man. This is, this is too much. This is crazy. We're not there. We're not there. The idea is, does it have the potential to step? Yep. And, and that's, that's where we're going to be. It's going to come in succession, right? Certifications right? Validations, winter testing, fine-tuning the product, getting the prototypes dialed in, getting, the, getting this in the hands of the fleets, man. That order from GPL that just came through a 50, huge, huge. And I'm going to talk about one of the sub-reasons as to why that's such a bullish move for Hylion here and what it actually means for the broader perspective here when looking at the Hylion opportunity. I thought the media coverage has improved a lot. Um, I mentioned going into 2021, and I've been accused on Twitter of just being a bipolar asshole. Um, no, my, I don't, no, when I offer my criticism, it's it's very real. Um, it's it speaks to my um, um, uh, frustration with the company, and uh, perhaps they were justified, perhaps they were warranted. Um, but the perception per perception that you give when you go silent on the line, which was my perception, um, and a lot of the bulls would say it's okay. It's not okay. Um, it's it's not. They, they needed to improve upon that. And they have. They have. Um, I've been slowly impressed by the, um, uh, the quality uh, of the media that they're getting. 
Um, I thought JMAC going down there, I thought that was interesting, really interesting. And they've turned out a few interviews since then uh, that have been really good, man. I, I eat that stuff up because um, I'm hungry for the content to understand um, what the goings on at a company that, um, again, I cover and don't just put out a YouTube video for my own personal gain, right? I'm invested in the company. So I'm very interested in those insightful um, uh, goings on at the company, right? So when those are turned out through media, I certainly appreciate those efforts. Um, I think they're doing a better job. They, they, they need to keep it up. And, the, and I believe that they will. I, I believe that if there were any uh, uh, pickup from the charge of that scrutiny uh, into the back half of 2021, which was horrible, and it was silence on the line, I think they've done a pretty good job of picking up on that. And some of the, some of the bears uh, or some of the criticism that I'm hearing from some of the uh, YouTube um, content creators I feel like they're kind of beating this to death. In other words, like, let it go. Like where I'm quick to criticize, I'm, I'm also quick to compliment. So if you fix what it is, I feel like is a valid criticism, then I'm not going to just continue to double and triple down on those criticisms. Why? Because the stock price is recessed. Let that go. Put those observations in a box. If you truly do still feel that way, okay, I can't make you feel that way. But I think sometimes maybe our expectations get a little bit out of whack in that our expectations are not doable in reality. And, and I think doing nothing in latter half of 2020, my observations were 100% justified. You can not like it. Um, I just told the people who didn't like it, Twitter, don't follow me. Don't follow me. I, I don't care. I don't care. Unsubscribe. You don't like my message? You think I'm too scathing? Huh? I don't give you the buttercup on your backside too often? No, I don't. This is stock market investing, all right? Stop being a bitch, toughen up a little bit, all right? I'm giving you the goods the best I know how, all right? They 5X the hiring in February, this is huge, okay? Where I would suggest perhaps maybe that the board of governance has been built out fairly aggressively. I love the ties there. They're yet to really generate any type of interest and churn on that. I think it's a little premature for it, but this board of directors is an all-star board. And I want to give ample credit to the team at Hylian as well, uh, 5Xing their amount of jobs being shopped and jobs being filled in just February alone. A lot of people don't talk about that. Um, Thomas Healy just summed it up by basically saying they doubled the team in 2021. I, th I think this is, is fabulous. OK, you're, you're, you're not you're not doubling the team to not sell trucks to people. You're not building out this team to embolden this vision of where they want to take the opportunity. It just, it, it, think about it from a realistic perspective, guys. Sit back for two seconds and ask yourself, do you want to be invested in a company that's scaling back, um, uh, firing, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, cutting back to meet market cap strain constraints? I, they're not doing that. They're building out the team and they're doing so aggressively. It's, the bears would say, well, they need to 10X their hiring. Okay, you got me. But I think 5X on, on February is something to be um, noted. I, I think from a bullish conviction, I don't think Thomas Healy gets enough credit. I don't. Um, I, I think, I, you know, I compare a lot of CEOs out there. I interview a lot of CEOs. This is Thomas Healy's first company. I give some, um, some due credence to the latitude um, in that I think Thomas Healy's brilliant. Um, and I think he's going to realize how it is that he can evolve in the job. J Mac said something uh, on his demeanor in the shop when he was going over um, the, 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 the mechanical and the engineering side. He said Thomas was in his element. He didn't need somebody to come and speak about the products in his, in his facility. He could do it himself. That's impressive. Little things I pick up on that. Does Thomas Healy have the potential to grow into a great CEO? Yeah, I do. I think, and, and it could be scary how good this guy is. To the contrary, and I know this is going to piss off a lot of people. That's all right. That's all right. I live under people's skin a lot of the times. That's why they unsubscribe from the channel all the time. And that's fine. That's great. Um, Elon Musk. Think about all the false hopes that Elon Musk has projected to the audience out there um, to generate all kinds of churn on Tesla, um, only to fall short of those expectations. There has been one thing after another that he has promised to the investor community that he has just failed short of, and not even to deliver anything on those projections. 
when I compare Thomas Healy, Thomas Healy strikes me as a very, very good guy. He does. Um, and contrary to some opinions on Twitter that are calling for a resignation of Thomas Healy, um, again, you're entitled to your opinion. This is one that I just completely wholeheartedly disagree with you on. Um, I think Thomas Healy is a fabulous CEO. I think he's fabulous. And I think it's more interesting to me to see how he's grown into the position. Um, I don't think he's a dominant CEO right now. Could he be in five years? Yeah, I do. I think you give this guy a company that actually has a little more sentiment in the industry and, and not such a laughing stock stock price. Um, and, and I think he dominates because I think he takes command of specific interviews. I've seen him on panels wipe the floor with competition, not because he's being uh, scathing, but because he understands the business inside and out. He understands the very metrics of the diesel to CNG to RNG equivalencies. He understands the lack of infrastructure in the industry. And he's built highly on holdings around that thesis. So when you want to talk about a bullish thesis on the company, the top guy is one of those. And there are schools of thought that would disagree with me on this. And they would make their conviction uh, buy or not to buy based on uh, their scrutiny of the top guy. And the CEO will always receive the highest level of scrutiny uh, at a company. That's just the way it is. I think Thomas has handled it in stride. And I think it would add this. It's been a very, very tough go over the last two years. I think it's been difficult. I think with the supply chain issues, number one, I think number two, with the pandemic effects on uh, the, the economy as a whole, I think has been very, very difficult. And as of late, um, the geopolitical uh, situation with the invasion and how that drawdown in the stock market has been nothing but headwind for highly on holdings. I think if he can weather uh, this particular juncture right now, I think we could potentially have the worst times behind us. And I don't see any better CEO leading us into the vision for a cleaner future than Thomas Healy. This guy doesn't strike me as somebody that doesn't believe what it is he's talking about. He doesn't. And I, 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 I can't wait. I don't know if I'll ever be provided the opportunity to talk to this guy just one time, just one time, because some of my questions are absolutely justified. And I think Thomas Healy would have a field day in generating an interview in between my questions and his responses that would benefit the community at large, that would be an insurmountable, immeasurable benefit to the in, in investor community. And I wait for that day. Orders versus reservations was defined on the last Q4 call. Um, I thought Sherry did a fabulous job, just like she always does. Um, I think the CFO and the CFO and the CEO of this company are fabulous. Um, but I've got a special affinity for Sherry Baker in her professionalism, demeanor, command over the numbers, uh, strategic oversight of the development of the, um, uh, the new facility. Um, I think there's nobody better. I, I think um, she's an industry vet, and I think she's uh, deserved all of the accolades that, she, that has been bestowed upon her, um, and she's earned it. It's not my opinion. She has earned that. Um, I think she's fabulous. I, I think she knocked the last Q4 uh, earnings report um, out of the park. I think she's coming into her own. Um, and I think here's a CFO that will probably evolve with this company. And I, I hope I hope she stays put. I, I really hope that she's really excited about this company. And I think that excitement hopefully will be backfilled with uh, validation. Um, I, I think I, I really hope that this validation provides some backfill and some, some substantiation and some validation um, as to the vision. Vision doesn't pay the bills, guys. Okay. They need to sell product. They know that. Sherry knows that. She sees it in the numbers. She discloses those numbers to, to everybody. And I thought the two to three million was awful, awful aggressive. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, if they can do, if they, again, uh, the backflip, and again, with the hopes of not breaking my neck, I will absolutely do if they can garner in between two, two and a half million, three million, if they beat that, ah, oh, Jesus. I mean, we're talking, again, a range of 900% year over year to 1400%. That's already been disclosed. They have enough internal to where what was shared on the Q4 call is to suggest that they will step up from 200,000 last year, 2021. It's gone. It's over. The new year, 2022, two to three million in hybrid EX sales. Huge, huge for Hylion. Improved year over year, 900 to 1400%. If that doesn't move the stock, which it probably won't, it probably won't. And I don't really care at this point. Okay. It can be $2, it can be $12. Doesn't matter. I'm in the stock for the long term. I'm in, I'm, I'm in the stock until we start to talk about um, worldwide. 
uh, type of integration with the movement. I just think the churn is, is very exciting. I think the movement toward um, alternative fuels and not being subject to what we're subject now with $4 diesel. How are these fleets not hungry? Um, Hylion can't get this product to market soon enough. And I think Thomas Healy would agree with me on this. Um, I think they're chomping on the bit because I think that they would be selling units right the hell now. You betcha. Um, I think they've it's unfortunate with the supply chain issue, we're probably putting a cog in um, those first timelines that were turned out. But could you imagine if the Hypertruck ERX right now was able to be put into long uh, haul service, certified by the CAR, BPA and NIPSA uh, to start running goods for these uh, fleets that could circumvent uh, the anchor of diesel prices right now at over $4 a gallon? Huh. Game over, game over. <laughs> I'm not doing backflips, I'm laughing my ass off. I will come on and do a 60 minute YouTube video where I just laugh my ass off. Um, people would, again, unsubscribe from my channel because it's like, did you see this guy he just came on and laughed my ass off? When, when you wouldn't even understand the actual reason why I'm laughing my ass off, because right now the current situation is nothing short of laughable. It's nothing short of laughable, okay? And I think the bulls in this camp agree with me 100% on this. They really do, all right? Even the little mule agrees with me 100%, man. Are you with me on this? Fantastic. Feels good to be alive. I love doing this project. I love talking about this project. I devote a little bit of my time on the weekend. When I step away from the mic, guys, um, I'm off to doing my other stuff. Um, at the gym. I already hit the gym today once. I may hit it again. We'll see. I may go for a run today. It's 80 degrees here in Virginia. I can't believe it. I love doing this product. I think we're on something special. It's just that simple. I love sharing my bullish thesis with you guys and um, we'll live to fight another day, man, where the countdown starts now. It starts right now into 2023. Where we go from now at sub $4 is gonna be incredible going forward into the future, all right? But the definition between orders and reservations I thought was key. Sherry did a great job of talking about orders being with deposits so that we're able to have a little bit more granular insight. I, I like the fact that Thomas didn't say how much the deposits were. There was a tweet that came out that somebody said it was 500. Um, perhaps maybe you didn't listen to, to, the, to the call. Thomas said it was in the amount of thousands. Okay. And I like the fact that he, he did not disclose what that is. Um, I, that's their business. Uh, a deposit is, is a deposit. Either you get a deposit, you don't put down a deposit if you don't have intent to buy. You just don't do that. You put down a deposit to find to hold your place in line because you're presuming that that order queue is going to build between the time of now and by the time you could potentially take receipt of the truck. It's not rocket science. Shit, guys. Come on. It's not that hard. But orders being put down really kind of solidifies that order book at the, at the beginning. I think they need to garner and solidify some of these older, older uh, orders like Agility, for example, that in my mind has kind of died on the vine. They need to solidify that shit. And Agility needs to step up to the plate and, and, and put a few hundred grand down on that order. It's just that simple. Um, stupid did not have that. Um, if they've put them into that camp, then subject those old orders to those um, unless they've gone away. Um, and agility should go back, back to the back of the queue. They're an innovation council member. I don't know why these folks haven't looked to solidify. I believe that they will. I think it's slightly pre premature on that, um, but I'd love to re-solidify some of those older orders that have come through. A and G and Ag agility are the couple that come to my mind. You know, Detmar's got 300 on the books, right? So I think that might be where uh, hopefully some of this uh, uh, generated income is coming from is the deposits that are rendered uh, on the um, uh, Hypertruck ERX. Good stuff. It's all good stuff, baby. It's all good stuff. All right. Reservations, they'll continue to accept. But I, I think, you know, reservations are one thing, but the orders are the ones that are going to help queue up the order of precedence on who gets their trucks first. I think that's huge. Q4, we talked about hydrogen fuel cell. I think the stock should have shot up after the uh, earnings. And, and of course it didn't. I, 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 obviously they're, they're trying to claw out of this rut that they're in. It's really muddy <laughs> and it's really slippery. And they, they, they push that out there. And, you know, um, Sherry Lentz has come on board and um, I think it's Sherry Lentz, Sherry Lance, yeah. Um, from Meritor and from another company, it's escaping my mind right now. Um, to look at product development and oversee product development, hydrogen fuel cell being that, et cetera, et cetera. I envision a future of uh, two different agnostic uh, hypertruck ERXs that one could be put into service for uh, hydrogen fuel cell, the other to be put into service for 
um, renewable natural gas. And I think what a fabulous option for fleets to look at and say, look, we can, we can service our uh, customer need in a certain percentage of our fleets using this solution over here. We can uh, go a little bit more exploratory, I think, on the hydrogen fuel cell side and supplement some of our fleets. Now they can do this while the CNG Hypertruck ERX or RNG um, Hypertruck ERX is working, working, working and allow the infrastructure to take place. I think we're 10 years plus. Um, you know, there are a lot of schools of thought are like, well, hydrogen is right around the corner. And, you know, Nicola does a good job of, of painting a, a future in fairy tale land. Um, whereas I, I just discredit that notion that hydrogen is going to be readily available around every corner, just like shell stations are uh, in this country. It just ain't going to happen. And I, I put 10 year plus on this deal. Um, you guys can agree with me if you want. If we get it sooner, great. If not, then the ERX has a decade of kick-ass time uh, before we look to transition and just introduce that uh, additional alternative fuel uh, into the fleets. Hydrogen fuel cell being, I don't know, RNG is not going away, and I don't think diesel is going away either, okay? I don't. I think diesel is the target right now, where fleets are not liking the fact that they're tethered to the anchor of diesel right now with such a variance and fluctuation of, of diesel prices. It's horrible. Could you imagine how awesome that would be to the bottom line to run uh, a a compressed natural gas in your truck right now? You've got an alternative. Right now, they don't. Uh, and they're subject to the market fluctuations of diesel. It's horrible. I don't, these fleets are hungry. They have to be. And uh, customers are hungry as well um, to look to, to support these fleets in uh, providing their products uh, in, in a more greener fashion. And I think these companies are all looking at their carbon scores uh, looking to reduce those and highly on is just the solution to allow them to do that. Bullish, product validation and certification. I don't think FEV gets enough attention for the reaction that JMAC had in the passenger seat of the Hypertruck ERX. <laughs> I think FEV had a big, deal, a big, a big part in this. Uh, in really going through the system and making sure that when they are put to the rigor of certification through the EPA uh, and through NITS, NIPSA and through CARB, that they're able to successfully negotiate those, um, those certifications with, with ease. Um, right now, what's going on is internal validation. Um, winter testing will be part of the internal validation process. And the fleets will uh, assist with that once those, um, those models are put into the hands of the fleets and they're able to uh, use those in their uh, over the road um, applications. I, I think this is huge. I think once the CARB and, and NIPSA and the EPA certifications are rendered, I think that's just gonna be one of those many catalysts in the step in the right direction that is going to um, um, create an eligible product that can be put out for mass scale. It, it's huge, it's inevitable, it's gonna happen along with a lot of other things that are gonna happen between now and later 2023, as we look at this opportunity over the next 24 months, as we transpire, evolve, um, and as those unforeseen catalysts are introduced to the company, I think they've got a lot more up their sleeve. So stand by for roles. I do anticipate that I can talk on and talk about the nose uh, all I want every week on Hylion, and I'll continue to do that. But the real key in this, in this company is their ability to surprise to the upside. And they have done that time and time again time and time again in public markets and they're being given zero credit for it, zero, all right? The cash position is a bullish position to be on. They don't have the, the, rigor, the strain and rigor of looking for capital right now. Um, I think they would be least uh, 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 capable or eligible um, to solicit for uh, those fundings, being that the stock price is so reduced right now, um, they would be soliciting those funds from a position of weakness rather than strength. Um, and I think it's great to bridge that opportunity from now until then, where they can really stand on their own two feet and their ability to do that is their cash position. We're looking at about just a little less, I think, than 500 million cash and cash equivalents. Last time I looked, 485, I think I'm, I'm right in the ballpark um, on what we're looking at. Um, you know, a few hundred million of cash, um, uh, 150 or so in short term, uh, and the remainder in long term um, um, convertibles. Okay, so short and long term investments that they would have access to. Um, there's certain time frames that uh, cap those short term uh, investments, no more than 36 months, et cetera, et cetera. You can do that research on your own. I've already done it through my due diligence, but I always just disclose that the company is great. They have no debt. 
um, with regard to their cast position. It's fabulous. Um, so they've got that. And even with the increase of the current burn rate, um, you're talking about the potential to supplement within a two year time frame um, that bottom line revenue with the hyper truck ERX sales, which the margins on are significantly better. Um, so that will go right to the bottom line and help supplement that cash burn. And there's gonna be an offset. There's going to be uh, an impasse between those two where the sales start to uh, increase to a point where it can cover that cash burn from a year over year perspective. And that's what's going to render itself to the bottom line profit once they're able to step up and, and gain some of those respectable uh, market grabs in this $1 trillion industry that we're looking at, okay? So the cash position, very, very bullish from my perspective. Innovation Council, they've surprised me. Um, uh, um, Green Path Logistics and the last 50 order, that meant a lot to me. Um, and it meant a lot to me from what it represented uh, in a couple of different capacities. And I'll talk about the one here in just a second with the secondary fleet perspective. But the 50 represented, if you're going to be on the Innovation Council and you're really, it, it means more uh, to be called upon with that, those 11 companies that are partnering, partnering, dare I say, um, I think Thomas Healy would agree that these companies, and I believe that the companies would also agree that they're partnering with Hylion um, in this mission, because if they can pull this bitch off and provide uh, those hypertruck ERXs to the fleets that can run for a thousand uh, miles and increase payload and power and, and, and driver uh, uh, satisfaction and efficiencies to the bottom line with regard to being uh, non-dependent upon diesel. Um, I can't put it any other way. There's a lot to be excited for. That's why the Innovation Council was, um, was created. And furthermore, the ability to really walk side by side with industry, with these partners that represent enormous fleets, um, these are these are not small potatoes, okay? These fleets right here really do epitomize kind of the top of the iceberg and getting their uh, driver opinions, what they need in their fleets, what it is to look for, and and Hylion is listening. Um, I, I have heard nothing of the sort from some of the other competitors. So this is a different approach. Is it going to pay off? Well, I don't know. Up till now, it's been no, but I think it will. And I think being a forward-looking, visionary investor in this company, I think you look at these and you say, how can it not pay off? How can it not be acknowledged that these fleets are not offering their opinions, knowing that it's not falling on deaf ears? Nicola, Nicola's doing their own thing. They want to put a truck out there that drivers have to drive. Hylion is looking at it to say, look, we're not changing anything with the truck, to be honest with you. We're changing where it counts. And the, it's the where it counts that we would ask for your feedback on, candid, hopefully in some cases, to say, look, this isn't gonna work. This isn't gonna meet a spec, or this is wrong. You can't do this. You can't put this here. You can't put the display screen there because of people who are you know, incurring a, 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 a corrective lens type of restriction on their license, their CDL, right? These are all huge. And I, and I look at this as an integration with industry rather than a, hey, it's going to be my solution or, or, or my way or the highway, no pun intended. Okay. I think this is huge. I think the Innovation Council, although it's been rather quiet over the last many, many months, um, I thought 21, 21 was extremely tough. It was, it was tough on me. Um, I'm looking for that validation. I believe it's right around the corner. And I, I think it's going to be exciting times. 2021 was really, really tough because I thought, what, what the hell is Innovation Council doing? I challenged the notion that some of these Innovation Council members needed to be replaced. Let's get them the hell off of there. If they're not going to participate, they're not going to play ball, get them the hell off of there. To hell with all the free advertising that they're getting. But that um, Green Path Logistics, man, it meant a lot. And here's the secondary takeaway that I got from that. Amazon, U.S. Postal Service and um, uh, UPS, those three things. When you start talking about the secondary markets, this blasted me in the face on the Q4 call. And they're um, hiring or selling to the new fleets, the five fleets that I had never even heard of before. Ooh, that tells me a lot. Monet on the last one, on the 40 Hypertruck ERX orders, shows me not only that they can garner 40, 40 orders, bears would say, oh, that's stupid. It's not, and it's not insignificant. That's an awful big order uh, to get anybody's attention. 
But for me, looking subsurface, that's exposure to Mexico, right? That, 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 that's exposure to a whole nother country. And it's a dab in the direction of worldwide acceptance, as opposed to just winning over the domestic markets. GPL is Canada, okay? So there's a lot more to think about here. It's worth having, having those discussions now where the stock price less than $4 um, to the trained eye is, is laughable at this point. And we will have our vindication. Trust me on that, we will have our vindication. $4 right now is complete disconnect. Um, it's complete garbage and it's just plain wrong. It's just plain wrong. Stock market's got it wrong. It happens all the time, okay? It happens all the time. And that's what's going on right now. Something that I wanna point out from a bullish perspective is regard to the, the um, um, how strong I think this investor community is. Um, you know, uh, Jason, Jason and myself talked and um, he, he said that he, he made a point to, to, to foot stomp the community. I thought that was important. I think sometimes I, I definitely shy away when certain community members go after each other. Um, I think that's indicative of, unfortunately, the retail community. Um, I think it would be easy as an institutional investor just to put other people's money to work, you know, for them. Either you lose or you don't. Obviously, you want to win. You do your due diligence. You can do your due diligence on a company like this. And, and, and as of late, we've been wrong. Um, as of late, over the last 18 months, we've been wrong. Um, but I think the importance in understanding how sticky this investing community has been will only speak to the conviction going forward in that if you truly have the conviction that I think that you could have even now at about as recessed a stock price as we could potentially even be looking at in the history of this company right here and now, I think going forward, it's going to be a gravy train. I do. I do. You, you don't think for a second that uh, holding this stock at $10 is going to be a hell of a lot easier than holding this stock at, at four? What about 20? Man, it's going to be people sell the stock. No doubt about that. It's a retail investor community. They're going to remember how bad it felt when it was at $4. And they're going to say, I, I can't do this anymore. I, and they'll sell out prematurely. That's going to be the, one of the biggest mistakes in this company, selling premature. It's going to be the biggest mistake because for those investors that know, and they've been forged in fire and understanding that if they have been there, it's only made them tougher and, it, and it's made them more conditioned to not give away those shares when there is a panic frenzy for said shares. Right now, a market volume is about 2.2 million per day. Okay. And when the demand on these shares goes up immensely, you're going to have a demand on said shares and you're going to have a sticky community that says, I'm good. Um, I don't need to give away my shares unless I opt to do so. Very, very important here. And I think there's a larger than average contingent of retail investors who own this company that know exactly what it is they own. And I think that that is going to put a press on this to the upside when Hylion starts to march toward that inevitable end of mass scale production going forward, that's gonna put a press on this company that we have never seen before in a company that right now is easy to discredit. It's easy to uh, push aside. It's easy not to invest in it right now. And I think that's one of the biggest makes mistakes, misapplications that's going on right now with this company with regard to just looking at the stock price alone and not looking below the surface at the potential reach of this company. They're giving you little bits here and there. The, the, the answers are right there, guys. It's not like you have to solve a science project here. It's not like you have to come out with a thesis uh, and, and generate information that's not available on the public marketplace. I believe that information is right there to, to be had. And I'll be damned if I'm, I'm not going to come on every single week and share what it is that I'm seeing, trying to kick over those rocks and uncover those little tidbits of information. Because in the future, it could render an, a mass amount of profit. And, and, and that value will be added when all of those ingredients are put into the bowl and we pull out this, this recipe of this Hylion, this, this animal that's being created right now um, in realizing this vision going uh, forward into the future. The last thing I'll talk about here from a bullish perspective, and it was alluded to a little bit on the call for the first time, I was super excited about the multi-use application, whereas the subscriber uh, community and the onboard monitoring system and really looking to partner with these industries um, and, and garnering that opportunity to allow Hylion to do more of an active type of a management system 
uh, for these companies, I thought was really, bo really bullish. Um, and I think they will. I think on the onset, it's been alluded to um, by the CEO of Dana long, long time ago, where he said, this is the true value of Hylia. Um, people are missing it. If you look at the nuts and bolts of the company, and you're missing the opportunity here in projecting preventative maintenance um, on the new solution, um, giving fleets the insights to know, hey, here's the probability that this could potentially go defunct in uh, six months. We recommend a change out within three. To give those preventative forecasts is priceless. And it will, um, uh, hopefully, the idea is that it reduces downtime. Um, a diesel um, engine can incur catastrophic uh, issues. And the monies that go into supporting those from a mechanical perspective and the preventative maintenance that goes into supporting those fleets, can it will shift in sentiment. And the, the idea the highly on profits from uh, the, the, the monitoring and the partnering with these companies in actively monitoring through their onboard uh, uh, data and analytics that they have being sent to the cloud, extrapolated through their proprietary algorithms uh, and systems and by their system analysts that they got back at Hylion should allow them to grow out their team and move toward a little bit of a subscription-based type of situation with these fleets in partnering and really even further solidifying the relationships uh, with these fleets that, they, that they're looking to partner with uh, into the future. So guys, I hope you appreciated this uh, bullish look on Hylion. These ones I get really fired up upon. Um, I do want to stress, and um, I, I did talk about a little bit in this video, do your own due diligence. Um, this is not for the faint of heart. Um, this is not value investing, okay? Um, this is not passive uh, ETF investing. Um, this is active investing. Okay, your risk tolerance has to be sharp. It has to be well defined. Um, you can control your risk tolerance by nature of the position that you look to take on um, in a position like Hylion. Um, only put in what it is that you are willing to lose. Um, hear, hear the perspectives from a, a lens of, of, of a scrutinizing investor. And that way you can validate uh, everything that's been shared with you today. I work very, very hard uh, behind the scenes doing my own research uh, for the betterment of the community. Um, I laugh at the stock price. I think it's hilarious. I think it's idiotic. Um, I think it's embarrassing. I think it does not reflect the true value. And where I see other companies um, in the uh, investing landscape that do absolutely get the nod, they get the favor, they're allowed to make projections on things that never, ever will come to fruition. Uh, I think I think Hylion is really, really underrepresented. I, I think they're really, really misinterpreted. Uh, and I think providing awareness is absolutely key uh, in uh, allowing Hylion story to come out right now at a time where I feel like it's flying under the radar in a big, big way. And those are the very opportunities that provide the most potential for upside uh, in the future, because when this thing does turn out and it becomes in the spotlight, it'll be game on. And you can't go back and redo the past. You cannot. You can only come up with your hypothesis about where you think this company is going to go in the future based on the many, many conversations that we've had, both on the bearish and the bullish side of this particular opportunity. And I believe it's the opportunity of a lifetime. That's why I laugh and I'll continue to wait. And I know there's a lot of bullish conviction within this community. I want to take this opportunity to thank you guys for your continued support uh, of these awareness videos. It just feels right for me right now. And I'll continue Continue to foot stomp this message as we march toward that 2023 uh, massive scale and ramp up. We will continue to enjoy the catalyst. We will continue to enjoy uh, what it is that Thomas Healy is looking to do to drive this company toward the vision for a cleaner future into the future. Guys, leave your comments at the bottom as you always do. Hit the subscribe button. Hell, hit the unsubscribe button if you'd like. I invited that in the, this video. You don't like my approach? Go do what it is that you do with your time and stop wasting your time with me, all right? Those people who tune into my message, I want them with me 100%. Don't waste your time as I'm not looking to waste yours or mine, all right? They hit the notification bell, get notified of uh, any future videos that I put online. Right now, we just happen to be on a highly on thread because I don't think that there has been um, any more of a, a, a blatant um, uh, opportunity that's been uncovered uh, by this drawdown in the stock price in a company that I feel is absolutely knocking on the door to a fabulous, fabulous future as it has the opportunity to grow uh, and realize its vision for the future. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.